Hi, this is Brendan from Watto Training, and in this trainer tutorial, we look at the reverse park for Queensland applicants. As part of the QSAFE driving test, the learner will be required to do at least two of the following manoeuvres. U-turn, hill start, reverse park, reversing exercise, turn around and automatic gear change. At least one of the manoeuvres will have a reversing component. Let's look at your teaching process for delivering the reverse park. Number one, create a clear learning program. Number two, make the material matter. Number three, deliver the session with purpose and passion. Number four, have a learner-centered focus. And five, reinforce with repetition and feedback. Instructional tips. Keep it simple and focus on what matters. Don't let yourself be overwhelmed. Be concise. To be concise means the instructor presents the information clearly in as few words as possible without skimping on the content. Make every word count. Be clear. To be clear means the instructor doesn't complicate the message. Break the information down into bite-sized pieces. Don't try to achieve too much too soon. Be patient. Progress at the rate the learner can manage. There are many teaching techniques used in relation to the reverse park. Make sure the technique you teach is in line with the road rules, is safe, in line with the vehicle manufacturer's guidelines, technically correct, and in line with the QSAFE performance checks. Am I in a safe location? Choose somewhere safe, legal and convenient. Do not park where your vehicle will make it awkward for other road users to pass. Make sure the student is correctly set up in the driver's seat or fork driving and conducting manoeuvres. This includes the seat, the steering, with maximum visibility. Make sure the student's mirrors are correctly set up before driving and conducting manoeuvres. Before commencing, conduct a six-point check to make sure it's all clear, to the front, to the back, to the sides, that includes shoulder and mirror on each side. Be aware of your blind spots. Keep your eyes on the move throughout the manoeuvre. Use your peripheral vision. Peripheral vision is a part of vision that occurs outside the very centre of your gaze. Hazards. Be mindful of pedestrians before reversing, especially children who are more likely to step out behind your vehicle. Choosing a safe and legal place to conduct the, the manoeuvre. Example number one. This is an unsafe location for a reverse park. Reason one, too close to the driveway, and reason two, it's on, an, on a bend with restricted vision up ahead. Example number two, this is an unsafe location for a reverse park as well. Reason one, it's too close to the corner. Reason two, there's a truck parked just around the corner, an excavator operating, which is distracting for road users. And number three, the shadows which can affect vision. Unsafe location number three. We have a vehicle parked on a corner. It's too close with poor vision and it's highly dangerous. Unsafe location number four. This is unsuitable as well because the road is too busy and too narrow. Be wary of gutters and drains when choosing your location for the reverse park. As, um, as you approach the target vehicle that you're going to do the reverse park on, have a close look at where it is parked. Note the position of the parked car in this diagram. It's right up on the curb. Some students misjudge their reference point as a result and end up hitting the curb. Let's have a look at some key instructions. As you approach your target vehicle, use mirror indicator blind spot checks. Park next to the target vehicle and cancel the indicator. You should be approximately one meter away from the target vehicle or an arm's length Keep scanning the road environment. I know that in some jurisdictions that the left indicator is left on for the maneuver, no problem. Select reverse gear. Keep your right foot on the brake, push the clutch in with your left foot and select reverse gear. Use 
either the hand over hand or pull push steering technique for the maneuver you need to be able to look out the back window as well as your other key vision points stop and give way if you see a hazard e.g a car approaching okay let's have a look car x is left wing this is reference point number one sorry for the maneuver so as you move straight back car x's left wing mirror lines up with car z's b pillar as shown by the red line feel free to stop the tutorial or pause it at any time if you need to have a look at those reference points uh, reference point number two which some trainers use car x's rear axle lines up with the back of car z reference point number three Car X's front window lines up with Car Z's back window, as shown by the red line. Reference point number four, the driver of Car X looks over their left shoulder and lines up the back driver's side brake light on Car Z through the reference point, e.g. back quarter glass of Car X or halfway along the should say rear passenger window, depends on the type of vehicle. Okay, let's go through the maneuver. So again, there are more ways of doing this than you can poke a stick at. I reckon there's more than 13 that I've been um, exposed to in my time as a trainer. So we're just giving you one to work off. So step one, the driver of Car X does a 360 degree scan. Give way if necessary. If clear, reverse slowly. Primarily scanning to the rear and quickly turning steering wheel full lock to the left. Keep scanning whilst reversing to the 45 degree angle. Straighten the wheels and reverse back. The driver of car X will notice the top of the curb disappear in the left wing mirror. At that point, the driver can turn the steering wheel to the right and bring the front of the car towards the curb. Keep scanning and take it steady. Some tips on observation and scanning during the maneuver. Before turning the steering wheel at the start of the maneuver, check ahead for oncoming traffic as the front of your car will swing out as you turn, stop if necessary. As the front swings, swings out, check over your right shoulder for oncoming vehicle or pedestrians, stop if necessary. This is the point where you create the greatest hazard for other road users. Additional instructional tips. At the point where you are approximately 45 degrees as on the diagram, Steer to the right until your wheels are straight. If you gave one full turn to the left, then one full turn to the right will straighten the wheels. Reverse back in a straight line very slowly and turn brisk, briskly to the right before hitting the curb until the car is straight. When your car is almost parallel to the curb, then steer to the left to straighten the wheels. Ensure observations are made if more moves are needed to park. Some students will worry about hitting the parked car with the front left of car X. A reference point they can use is to ensure the left wing mirror of car X is behind the back of car Z before turning the steering wheel to the right to bring the front of car X in towards the curb. Don't rush. Use the left mirror as well as looking at the back and to the left, driver's left to line up the vehicle with the curb. This diagram shows our distances and reading from the section in green. The reversing vehicle can reverse back a maximum of three meters and must finish one to two meters from the vehicle in front. The reversing vehicle must finish within 45 centimeters of the curb and parallel. This diagram shows a tape measure showing you what 45 centimeters looks like. So you can see the Mazda is parked within the 45 centimeters distance and not all of those uh, concrete to bitumen connections are, are that distance. There's a bit of variation, but that gives you a rough idea. I've also put the tape measure out there to show you what one to two meters looks like. What if the student makes an error in relation to maneuver positions in the driving test? Non-critical errors for reverse park. Finish the student finishes the reverse park 45 centimeters or more from the curb or more than two meters from the front of in the vehicle in front. Uh, during the reverse park, moves the vehicle further than the distance of three meters between the parked vehicle and in front of the test vehicle. Should the applicant reverse more than three meters, the driving examiner must politely request the applicant to stop and continue the exercise 
with the forward movement. Now just to recap in case you're not aware, what is a non-critical driving error? This is a driving error that does not by itself compromise safety to road users or the safe operation of the vehicle. So basically these errors are if you don't do the maneuver within those measurements. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, legal, uh, the forward and reverse movements that you're allowed to do in the maneuver. So the applicant must reverse into a space behind a parked vehicle using a maximum of two reverse movements and one forward movement. So I've just numbered one, two, three there on the different colors, green, red, and purple. So for example, if Car X thought that it was going to hit the curb, they could move forward and come back a second time to correct. Okay, once the maneuver is completed, the applicant must drive off after completing the maneuver using a maximum of one change of direction. That is, one reverse movement if required. So I've just shown there in green is the reverse movement, just to back up and create a bit of space, and then use curb departure routine. Another instructional tip that um, some trainers give is that when car X comes in behind car Z, is the wheels don't necessarily have to be straightened up. So you've got to be within the parameters, but the wheels could be actually turned to the right so that you know once you get into the position, you can get out again. Key points to note in the QSAFE assessment for the manoeuvre. So here we are looking at um, the test requirement in relation to the manoeuvre. So when it comes to observation, scanning and shoulder checks, in a QSAFE test, the learner should scan, observe and monitor the driving environment in every direction as appropriate to the driving task. In relation to observation, a critical driving error would be nil observation to the rear when reversing. So it's, it's very important that they look to the rear, the direction that they're traveling in. Note, a CDE, critical driving error, is to be marked only when the applicant fails to physically look at any time to the rear when reversing. The applicant must apply all round observation, which includes turning the head to the rear where practical given, sorry, where practical given the vehicle design, auxiliary equipment, and the applicant's physical ability. A recap on what a CDE is, a critical driving error. A CDE is a driving error that compromises the safety of any road user or indicates an inappropriate level of skill or ability. So it has been deemed that if you do not, if your student does not turn their head and physically look out the back of the vehicle when reversing at all, it's a critical driving error and it is seen to be unsafe. Mirrors. In the QSAFE test, a learner should use the rear vision mirrors on the approach to any hazard or potential hazard. So not only do we look out the back of the back of the vehicle, you also need to check your mirrors as well. So there's a saying in, in defensive driving of keep your eyes on the move, and that, that would be an indicator of how you would manage that. Steering. In the QSAFE test, the learner should steer a safe and steady course and maintain the correct course in a manner that is appropriate for the road and traffic conditions. Avoid palming the steering wheel. Palming is where you press your right palm onto the wheel and turn it round and round. So it's like a forklift driver. So I've said already that you need to use hand over hand or pull push. Avoid dry steering during the manoeuvre. Dry steering is when the loaner turns the steering wheel of the car while the vehicle is stationary. Dry steering is not recommended as, as it is potentially damaging to front tyres and the car. Gears. Obviously this is for manual students. In the QSAFE test, the learner should demonstrate correct usage of all the gears appropriate for speed, vehicle and driving conditions. Clutch. In the QSAFE test, the learner should control the clutch in a manner that produces a smooth take up of power to the driving wheels and assist the changing of gears. Clutch control continued. The student will receive a non-critical driving error during the test if they excessively and continuously, continuously ride the clutch. This includes during low speed maneuvers. Please note, appropriate clutch control will be determined by the examiner based on the driving conditions at the time. For example, for low speed tight cornering on the reverse park, which was what we're talking about, the driver may need to feather the clutch to maintain good control. So there will be a little bit of um, understanding of that requirement from the examiner. What is feathering or slipping the clutch? This is when the driver alternately applies and releases the clutch just to get that bite point to achieve some movement of the car. The clutch plate will slip against the flywheel surface when such an action is performed. 
This action is generally known to be hard on the clutch surface due to the sliding friction created. So feathering the clutch isn't something that we, we do commonly, but we may do it during that maneuver um, based on the situation. Stalling. In the QSAFE test, the learner should prevent, could control the vehicle to prevent unnecessarily, unnecessary stalling. The student will receive a non-critical driving error during the test if they stall the vehicle for any reason, for example, poor clutch control, poor use of handbrake, or poor accelerator control. Intervention by examiner. The student will be unsuccessful in their driving test if the examiner is required to intervene either verbally or physically to prevent an accident, to prevent a dangerous situation occurring, for example, inadequate vehicle control that could compromise safety, to help the student through any part of the test because of their inability. That is, when it becomes necessary because of the safety or inadequate time to complete the test. Let's take a look at the uh, left of screen. This is an example of a non-critical driving error. Rolls up an angle curb without mounting it. So that would be, the picture would show a non-critical. However, if we look at the right of screen, a general critical driving error, that would be the student will be unsuccessful in their driving test if the test vehicle strikes another object, for example, vehicle, power pole, or pedestrian, resulting in potential or actual damage or injury. This includes mounting the curb with one or more wheels. Okay, assessing the reverse park performed by an applicant. Quest questions to ask yourself when assessing an applicant's performance. How is the applicant's approach speed, scanning, and signaling coming up to the parked vehicle? How was the applicant's starting position? Did the applicant conduct a six-point check? Did the applicant cancel the left signal prior to executing the maneuver? I've already made a comment that some people choose to leave that on. Uh, did the applicant give way if and when necessary? How was the applicant's clutch control, if manual? How was the applicant's speed control during the maneuver? So slow car, but fast hands is the saying a lot of trainers use. How was the applicant's steering technique during the maneuver? Did the applicant conduct correct mirror checks, scans, and shoulder checks? Did the applicant reverse no further than three meters behind the parked vehicle? Did the applicant finish one to two meters from their bonnet to the parked vehicle? Was the applicant within 45 centimeters of the, of the curb and parallel at the completion of the maneuver? And how was the applicant's departure from the situation? Thanks for watching. This has been Brendan from Watto Training.